ladies and gentlemen. All the protocol of this council is respected. Um, I'm standing here tonight to talk to you about something that I'm sure most of us uh, have heard about through the media, and it is the the, uh, uh, the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority and why I as a citizen, and, and let me make it clear that I am just a citizen, I'm not representing any organization, um, why I feel uh, the motions that are uh, the motion before you uh, tonight about the MPCA is important. So I have been involved uh, for about nine months in what I would say for me is, is a rather intensive look at, at the MPCA. I've never done anything like this before in my life. I got involved because I care about the environment, but I wouldn't have called myself an environmentalist before I got uh, involved in this. When, as I got involved, I started to turn over more and more information, and it quickly started to morph into more than an, an environmental issue for me. It started to change into what I would define as, as an assault on some of our very core democratic principles. So um, I believe and I'm hoping that this council will pass a motion tonight in support of a forensic audit of the MPCA. Um, I, I wanted to talk about two specific uh, guidelines that the MPCA is mandated to uphold. One of them is Section 37 of the Conservation Authorities Act, and I'm just going to uh, paraphrase it, but I can make it available in full, the whole act, if, if anybody is interested. But Section 37 of the Conservation Authorities Act, and I'm, I'm just going to quote the, um, uh, the last sentence, basically. Um, just bear with me. No salary, expenses, or allowances of any kind shall be paid to any of the members of the authority without the approval of the Ontario Municipal Board. So that's pretty straightforward. If you are a board member at the MPCA, the, any salaries or anything that you get has to be approved by the OMB. Now they do get um, daily per diems for the, for the days that they are at meetings and, and they get, as I understand it, they get mileage also. But in 2014, a sitting board member was paid $41,000. This is a, actually with HST, it would be about $45,000. There is no contract. There is no terms of reference. There are no reports that were generated for that $45,000 worth of work. And this was to a sitting board member. Uh, this is not an allegation. The MPCA does not back away from this. Uh, I've done all the requisite freedom of information requests on this information. Their initial response was to, and I'm grossly paraphrasing here because they used a lot of fancy words, but they said, no, we're not giving you the information on that contract or why that check was written. Uh, they said no for a lot of reasons that they were justifying with fancy words. I appealed that to the Privacy Commissioner. On appeal, the Privacy Commissioner gets involved, takes a look at the documents, and then uh, makes a decision on whether or not the public has a right to see. When the Privacy Commissioner got involved, the MPCA then had to issue a revised uh, decision to me and say, there are no documents. No documents exist. So a $45,000 check written to a sitting board member no documentation explaining why, what was delivered, what was expected from that check. Section 10.1 of the MPCA Board of Directors Policy Handbook states, and again, I'm, I'm going to, it states a lot, but I'm just going to get to a, a few of the sentences that matter. A conflict of interest also includes using a member's position or confidential information for private gain or advancement or the expectation of advancement. So basically, if you're on the board, you're in a conflict of interest if you use any information. And, and I think for people of your status, these are pretty well bread and butter issues. You understand uh, all of this stuff. You live and breathe it daily. daily. Um, and yet two board members accepted positions. They were hired directly from the board into senior management. One sitting board member was hired as the CAO. Another one was offered at, uh, hired as the uh, the manager of corporate services and now serves as the uh, corporate services director. So these are people being hired directly from the board. Again, when first asked, the MPCA will, sit, will give a response like, well, they stepped down from the board. But if you go back to the minutes, in fact, they did not step down. They took a leave of absence from the board 
to apply for those positions and were hired for those positions. And in fact, the CAO was hired for the position immediately after he wrote the terms of reference for the position. So the, the MPCA has some management issues. Also in the last uh, two, and two, two and a half years, 21 people, one third of the staff has been released for one reason or another. This is not downsizing. They have hired back um, all of those people. The qualifications of many of those people who have been hired are in question. The people who were let go were highly qualified to do uh, what they were hired to do. So we have one third of the staff let go in the last couple of years. There was something else I was going to say, but if you don't mind, because I, I, I know that time is always an issue when I'm standing here, I would like to talk about the motions that have been uh, passed around the region in, in the last uh, week or so. Uh, 